Making a living off of your creativity is a journey. There's an entire lifestyle that has to change to meet your deadlines and create and develop a schedule that works for you. You dedicate pockets of time to create after your full-time jobs or multiple part-time jobs. And you stretch as much energy as you possibly can or what little energy you have left into developing these mini masterpieces that you share and throw into the abyss. And you do that not because you want the world to see, but because of how creating the thing makes you feel. But you do it for so long that even the thing that brings you most joy and that you feel most passionate about starts to feel a little numb, maybe even a little transactional. Less about the passion and the inspiration that you had from the very beginning and more about keywords and algorithms and meeting deadlines and just a routine. I create within a niche where people are constantly developing new ways to say the same exact thing. To help as many people as you possibly can to motivate and inspire and empower. But what about the creator's needs? What about when we need help? What about when we feel stuck? Like myself. So I've been stuck at this crossroad. Do I create for the algorithm or do I create for the collective? And I'm gonna choose the collective every time. So I figured the best way that I can help you all this week is if I help myself, if I pour into myself by reconnecting and helping myself on display, hopefully through that authenticity and the ways that I choose to voyage back to myself. You'll feel encouraged to do the same if you reach a crossroads within your own life and you have an opportunity to either choose your authenticity or choose something else. I want the people that watch me or the people that trust me will feel comfortable and brave enough to say, you know what, I am not okay. And I would rather speak on the things that I need help with instead of putting on a fake smile and speaking on topics that aren't necessarily the raw and authentic truth of my reality right now. Or, you know what, I am having flashbacks of a scenario that happened to me and I am not over it and I'm trying really hard, but it's harder for me to connect with the people that love me and talk with them because I'm too busy talking to myself about the ways I could have done X, Y, and Z in this other scenario that is so far in the past, you know? These are real things and I want to express myself through the reality of what's happening in life right now for me. And hopefully, I can be of service to you today in that way. So, without further ado, welcome to the Raw and Half Podcast, where we get real and then some. I'm your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week, I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So... Let's get started. I want to start the video by saying I have so much gratitude for the things that I have learned this year and just how far we have come. Lately, I've been in the process of trying to find the right brand partnership for this channel, one that is in alignment with the future of my channel and my podcast, and also something that I can respectfully and honestly stand behind. Otherwise, what's the point, right? So two weeks ago, I went into a meeting with a partnership representative for a specific brand, and the brand isn't necessarily within the niche, and the person in the meeting wasn't from the company directly. They were basically a middleman between creator to brands. And upon speaking and talking about my worth, I realized that I was speaking to a total shark. Like obviously someone that has been in sales for a very long time. You know, not someone that cared about my specific niche, obviously. Or even if our brands were really in alignment, but someone that needed to obviously get as much as they possibly could from me from as little as humanly possible, you know, and this happens a lot. And it's nothing personal, but it's something that you have to be ready for, which I was not. 
So like earlier that day, my internet, because I moved into a new place, the internet that we had was not working well. So we had to switch over and we had an outage. So that morning I was trying to set up for the early morning meeting, but my internet was down. So I went to my public library and I was just like ready all to get on the phone to have someone tell me like, all right, we're going to slide you like $25 and, um, be just gone that you cool you should be cool with that and I'm like (laughs) I did all of that so anyway it's not personal but it's something that you have to be ready for you know this man justified the stature of my worth so low but like so cavalier and lowballed me as if it was something that I should be lucky enough to even be in the position to hear and Repeatedly I say it's not personal, right? But if I'm just naturally expressing myself and I'm giving myself the permission to feel, how could I not take that personally? You know, he doesn't know the year that I've invested into showing up and doing the work. He doesn't know the sleepless nights and the hours of editing, the connections that we've made and like how much that I'm trying to like help cultivate a safe community here. It's like to him, I was just a number. I was probably the 20th creator he spoke to that day. And in the moment, I felt defeated. I could feel myself shrinking and it's also the first time that I felt that way in many years. So for it to come up, it was it it was just like ooh it almost got me out of my character a little bit but it's like i just had to let it roll away because it was not i didn't see it as a bad thing you know it's just a reminder that we can do the work to get over feelings and obstacles that we will have to meet again you know doing the work doesn't mean that we're never going to do more work and it's never going to come up and we're always going to know what to do when it does come up. You know, you just develop better ways to do it every time. But moving on, I can just feel the soulless enterprise that is creative monetization. And I just appreciate God for allowing me the privilege to see its ugly truth so that I not put it on a pedestal and not seek validation through it or measure my worth by the ways these people will. You know, these brands hire corporate professionals to maintain a specific budget so it's really nothing personal. You know, the person I was speaking to was just doing a great job at his job. It's like, I can't hate the player but I hate the game, you know? I just hate that I left the conversation feeling completely in over my head and just without dialogue to match the energy of the moment or match the energy of his professionalism of, like, lowering me, you know? I think it caught me off guard because I realized, you know, it's easy to speak about honoring your self-worth when there's nothing in front of you to challenge it. And to this cis hetero, assumingly white male, it wasn't worth much. And you know, that is okay. But this means the world to me. And it was just my job to like hold my ground and refuse. And it sucks because you want to be a part of the other creators, like doing all of the fun things and, and being able to be marketable enough to like allow brands to like want to be a part of your journey but at the same time it still has to be right you know and it all was just you know a foreshadowing of the many opportunities that I will have to fight for my worth I guess I bring up this very real and common scenario to potentially help anyone out there trying to move forward in the creative process you know the more you grow the more you fight and the fights will be different and maybe a little bit more subtle but they will test your integrity a lot. They will test your worth a lot. And I guess I should have been expecting that, but I wasn't. And now I'm a little bit more prepared. You know, see a lot of creators use their platforms and creativity just to make commercials for other people's products. I don't know if you noticed, but that's a booming industry now. And it's great to be marketable. 
But when you're trying to establish yourself as your own brand, you have to be willing to draw a clear line in the sand of what you know your name has the potential to be because you will be tested on your ability to see that far into the future very early. You know, if you see it, don't fold. I hope that helped because it definitely helps me and it's something that I needed to realize because I got so turned off that I was slowly turning inward and away from like doing the work. I was like, how you going to tell me that, you know, I'm not lit enough? You know, it, it was just like, <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> it was like, I couldn't argue, but at the same time, I'm a, I'm, I don't know, you guys. It, it just didn't make me feel good. I'll just say that. It didn't make me feel good. It didn't make me feel good. I'm not going to, like, lie about it. It's a part of the job. And it was a cut to my ego a little bit. But it is what it is. This leads me to speak about stability. When you choose to become a creator and decide to give it your all... You do that with a sacrifice. You have to sacrifice something in order to make that happen. And for adults and for people that have responsibilities like bills and children, sometimes it's a little bit of stability because we have to have the flexibility of time in order to make certain things happen. You know, that's the reality of like being an adult. You know, I wish I could say at this moment in my life, I could have my cake and eat it too. But honestly, I can't, especially if I'm baking it all. Like I just, there is not enough time. So I decided to curate a lifestyle with the luxury of time so that I'm able to make room for the blessings that I want to have in my life. But I'm also a Virgo and I love security and I love being able to know, you know, when something is coming in. You know, I'm always at this crossroads of choosing one over the other, but at the same time, because of what I choose, this feeling of uncertainty is something that I have to prepare myself for because unfortunately, because of the lifestyle of a creator, it takes a while to really reach that point where you feel like you've arrived. You know, I know people that are, you know, way beyond me in their careers and they still never feel like they have it all under control. You know, they're constantly worried about the next job, that next check, that next big thing that can take them where they want to go. So if me feeling this way right now, I had to realize that it's a preparation for the things that I want and not cower into a lifestyle that I genuinely will never feel comfortable in just because of my, you know, lack of faith right now, because that's really what it is. It's fear, it's lack of faith, and as much as I like to speak myself out of those feelings, they're very close and they're very near, and that's the reality of like just being human. I would love to say that, you know what, I'm putting it all in a higher power's hands, and I am, but I also exist in real life right now. And these feelings and these thoughts come in my head. These thoughts I have no control over, but they're real and they make me feel real things. And I have to process through them. And then after that, I still have to create and I still have to do all of the things in my life to keep the ball rolling. And it is a challenge. That's why I feel like talking about it is like the best way to get through. When you're a creator, you're built for survival mode, but unfortunately, because of the work that I'm doing with myself and all of the ways that I talk about, you know, manifesting more, the ways that I'm talking about myself and the things that I want to bring into my life, it's kind of contrast to the ways that I am doing the work. And today I received a download that a group of unstable things will not make your platform more stable will not make you more stable so it's like I had to really get a grip of like I decided to have all of these things because I made a decision to sacrifice you know stability for time and I truly feel like my time is valuable so I use it in ways that are to propel me forward 
farther than any other job that I've ever had. So nothing feels set in stone, but I'm doing a lot of work. And after a while, it can feel very draining. And so when I speak about that, I speak about it to maybe potentially help someone that is also in the same boat as I am. It's like you reach one level and then there's another level, but there's always going to be these different levels and you're waiting for this light at the end of the tunnel and you have to realize that, you know, the tunnel is the place. It's in the tunnel that you really see your potential. It's in the tunnel that you probably meet some of the greatest people in your life and that I should be more present in this part of my life instead of just like speaking about the tiredness and the ways that I feel and my lack of social life and just all of the things. So the multiple part-time jobs that I have to keep a flow of revenue along with the flow of creativity I have to make for a better future, it's tough you know, that schedule that I decided, I felt like it was worth giving it a shot, but it doesn't mean that it's not challenging. And I have to give myself permission to say like, okay, I'm doing a lot right now. I'm trying to hold on to so many things and some things are a lot to hold on to. I'm doing it, but it's a lot. And It seems that if I make one wrong move, it will all slip out of my hands. I know potentially that's not the reality, but that is sometimes what it feels like. I feel like I'm constantly walking this tightrope that causes my anxieties and fears to believe that I can't afford like a large gust of wind or something that tips me out of alignment, even though I know I have a net. It's like not only is my family always there to support me, you know, I have people that love me in my life, you know. Also, God has just been so gentle with me lately. If anything, all of this uncertainty has me clinging to God so much more because I literally have no clue what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm just kind of doing what I was told to do and it's cool, you know. But it does feel very vast, very empty. And I'm giving myself permission to save that. This is a safe space to say I have no clue what's going on. Okay. Even from this place, I can tell you that when you get here, it will feel better than where you were, but it never feels how you think it should because there's always something to be done. There's always someone doing better. There's always someone doing more or different or something else. And after a while, you just have to like see yourself for what it is, see yourself for where you are and just run your race. And another thing that I'm trying to like challenge and like charge through is that like being a creative person does not mean you have to struggle. There are ways to view my situation and all of its amazingness Because I actually get to do it and it's a dream, right? That I'm actually doing what I said I was going to do. Calling it a struggle out of my mouth because I am genuinely tired. I don't want to gaslight myself into believing that it doesn't exist. But because I know the power of my words are so important. If I continue to think of it as the dream and take the challenges as just what comes with a busy schedule, then I'll be a vibrational match to do more things because I am obviously equipped with the tools to handle it all. And um, that was kind of like a light bulb for me. It's like gaslighting myself and doing the toxic positivity, like everything's going to be okay, you're not tired, there's like all of that, that's not real for me. I like naps. I like going to sleep. I am tired. I drink a lot of coffee. If you want to know a key, it's bad, but I drink a lot of caffeine. And so I've been really (laughs) trying to pull it together, but I have to remember that this is a dream. So just having that control, having the essence of like, the privilege that it is to do this is something that I should continue to like keep at the forefront of my mind. You can't have anxiety and faith at the same time. And I struggle with both. 
in my journey through journaling and through building this connection with myself, it's like I'm trying to like find a balance, obviously. Also, this is going to sound like a sidebar, but I'm telling you like this is going to make sense. I decided to watch Finding Nemo for the first time in like years randomly and it ended up being everything I needed to see because I... I was just learning so much about myself by watching that damn movie. So, like, everyone favors Dory, right? We love Dory, love her down. But I realized, like, I am Marlon. (laughs) Me and Marlon are, like, twins. And, like, I don't know how adulthood has me acting just like the guy. I was shockingly confronted with a lot of things about myself while watching that movie. And it was a very small moment, you know, just sitting there watching it, but it was so impactful because, you know, Marlon lived his life through like a fear-based lens and he spoke fluently in anxiety, which is a language that I know too well. And because of anxiety, I realized the type of arrogance people saw in me that I just could not understand or see within myself until now, until watching that movie. You know, because Marlon made decisions in his life based on one very traumatizing but defining moment, right? And it's when time forces us to move forward from the moment, but in our hearts and in our minds, it happened just like yesterday. So every waking moment of our lives, we brace ourselves with the potential of it maybe happening again. And it looks like protection, but it's really fear and a lack of forgiveness. We can't forgive ourselves for it even happening. So we choose to protect the people we love so they never have to go through the things that could haunt them and the ways that the things in our life haunt us. And we think that we're doing the best thing for the people we love, but on the outside, it's just perceived as being a know-it-all and just assuming that your way is the best way because it's rooted in so much fear and worst case scenario that we just think everyone around us hasn't experienced enough life because we're just so scary or we realize how big the world really is, how small we really are in comparison to other things, how so many things are out of our power. Um, it's really just putting people that we love in cages so they dare not experience anything at all. And when I realized this, I was like, like, wow, you know, it's the urgency that we have for our loved ones that makes us act this way. And I didn't realize I was the family member that people couldn't tell things to when things went wrong. And I was like, wait, why? Then I had to understand how I was and how it's perceived by others. When I love someone so much, I get so afraid for them that I try to fix them and I try to save them and I try to make it better. And the thoughts of anything happening to them puts me in so much fear that the only way that my body can process this emotion is by wanting to fix it and twist it and make it better. But I'm not doing anything to help and I'm not saying things that are helpful You know, I'm just talking about things that I would do if I were them and, you know, what they should do, you know. I want to help to escape the feelings of being completely helpless and the agony of not being able to help heal or fix the people I love is just causes me anxiety. And uh, so the very people that I want to love and protect, I end up pushing them away. If that sounds like anyone, if you know anyone that sounds like that, if that is you, girl, we are here, high five. I think acknowledging it is the very most important part of like changing. Maybe there's a part of us that is always going to be a worrier, but for ourselves, for our mental health, for our sanity, for our hearts, you know, our heart health, we have to find better ways at releasing You know, I've been trying to find ways with being better at letting go. It's so easier said than done. Allowing people to walk their own tight ropes of life, especially while I'm on my own. The evolution of my mind is always bringing me to this superhuman like ability to let go and make many U-turns in my heart about things 
I can't control about my feelings. And I'm always in this wave of like in my power and out of my power. And I have this battle between being perfect and just being human. You know, lately I've been just trying to be really quiet with myself as much as possible. At first I chose silence because I didn't want to miss out on an opportunity to hear God. But I think God was just giving me space to hear from myself and connect with myself, you know? But what about you? Like when you're in the small pockets of time where you're in solitude and you have the time spent with yourself, what is your heart saying? And are you giving yourself permission to take heed with what is being said? For the past couple of weeks, I've been distracted and I chose to like scroll on social media. I I chose to like indulge myself in a lot of creative things because I was running away from a feeling that I needed to face. And... I just had to kind of sit down and write it out and I'm happy I did because now I have something to share and now I have potentially have something that could help someone. So if you have been scrolling like just overly like too much, I think, I don't know if it's been studied yet, but I think a lot of us, we scroll because spending time alone with ourselves either causes us to like remember things in our past allows us to acknowledge the things that we can't control or change or it's because you know experiencing the emotions that come with looking at the videos and the tiktoks and all of the things are ways to distract us from the ways that we feel about ourselves especially like relationship things like when you're in this like relationship like whatever those clouds of like feeling things about your relationship you will see all of the videos about relationships and what you need to say and who, how, whatever. And it's just like, all it does is make you feel worse. And um, that happens a lot. And you ruin your relationship because of a video that you saw. And it's just like, eh. stop. This is me telling myself that. Like, chill. You know, Daquan is going to be okay. You know, just... It is what it is. It's really not that important because you need to be letting shit go anyway, you know? Anywho, thank you for listening to this rant. Like, I love you guys so much. It may not be as helpful for you today, but remember, I was trying to help me out today. Um, Hopefully next week, I'll be able to come together with something that'll be super impactful for the collective for you all if you have any tips on just topics that you would like for me to talk about hit me up let me know in the comments below i would love to begin writing and journaling about those things because i just like doing that but that is all that i have thank you so much for making it to this far into the video do not forget to like comment and subscribe it means so much to me do not forget to follow me on instagram at jasmine.siri and you can listen to this podcast all of these recordings are on spotify and apple at the ron half podcast where we can get as real as we possibly can and yeah i love you guys i will see you guys later